Hi, everyone. Welcome to uh, the TimingResearch.com Analyze Your Trade, uh, a special uh, Wednesday episode, uh, episode number 113 for February 12th, 2020. My name is David Cosmeter. I'm the creator of TimingResearch.com, and today we will be discussing uh, your trade ideas. So we are recording this live at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, and uh, today I have arranged for Harry Boxer to join us again. And Jim Kenny is back to moderate, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Jim. Okay, great. Good to have everybody with us here today. The markets, again, continue to scream to the upside, so there's a lot of action out there, no doubt about it. Uh, with us today is Harry Boxer, and Harry's been in this business for a very long time, and he's got some great ideas that he's going to share with you uh, about the midway point of our uh, meeting here. But uh, he will start out, and I'll start out going over the list that was submitted to us. Uh, before we get started, for those of the uh, uninitiated, uh, Harry, a little background on yourself and what you're doing down at your company. Well, the techtrader.com uh, is a day trading and swing trading website for active traders. We have several hundred people online with us every day. I, get, I tell people what to buy, when to sell it, and uh, where the stops are, and uh, I give them day trading and swing trading ideas constantly, nonstop, all day. I have a live website with constant updates. I'm online before the market opens. Uh, with about an hour and a half going over um, lots of news and charts and looking at uh, a possibilities idea. I create a focus list for my traders. We then go over the focus list, free market, pick out the ones we think are the best day trades, upwards of six to 10 uh, ideas a day. And uh, depending on your um, comfort level, they may be as, as low as a four or $5 stock, or it could be a $500 stock. It depends on the chart and the current action going on, of course. Um, and, uh, I welcome you guys to come in for free for two weeks, no credit card, and check out what we're doing. I think you'll be very pleased. Yeah, you got a trading room that uh, people are sharing quite a bit of information, right? Yeah, nonstop ideas are flowing by all day yeah. where people are sharing the chart, chart ideas and, uh, and trade ideas and even fundamentals, although I'm a tech technician and pretty much base all my, all my trading on, on, uh, on technical analysis. I've been uh, doing it for 66 zero years. I'm 73. And um, I wrote a book on trading in 2015 called Profitable Day in Swing Trading. If you want to get an idea of what my philosophies and techniques are, uh, pick it up on Amazon or um, um, you know, any of the major websites that sell books. So Yeah, the last 90 days, I mean, uh, we've had uh, a, lot of, a lot of volatility and obviously a lot of swing. So the, uh, it's been a target-rich environment. Let's start out with uh, Facebook, uh, FB. It's one of the companies that are not exactly screaming with the other... Uh, Fang stocks. Uh, so uh, what are you seeing on Facebook, Harry? Well, you can see my chart, correct? Uh, yep. Okay. Yep. Well, I, look, Facebook is a NASDAQ 100 general. It's a Fang stock. So I, I follow it carefully and religiously every day. You can see all the lines I draw on my charts showing webs, wedges, channels, um, trend lines, etc. cetera. Um, and right now it hasn't been as bad as you just said. It's got, it's gone from 173 to 224 in the last four months, uh, but it's had a pretty good hit of late. Now this rising wedge, I think is dangerous and it looks bearish to me, quite frankly. I don't, I'm not sure the market is anywhere near a peak, but I can tell you that unless Facebook gets going pretty quickly and gets back above the 215, 16 range with volume, this may very well be some sort of bear flag or bear wedge in here and I'd be awfully careful. Um, or, or, you know, or if the market just continues to push higher, like a lot of times we've seen, this was a buy opportunity. This was a retest, and any move over 214 with buy-in could lead to another run at the 222-24 area. And if that's blown out, my target's going to be the upper channel range up around 238 to 240, and my stop unequivocally under 200-202 range. You've got to be stopped out because if they break down, have a rising wedge here, if that's the pattern, and then they roll over, we're probably going to test 193. That's my next downside target if it breaks. Okay. And um, the other, uh, the next stock that has been in the news uh, is Twitter. And uh, that is a stock I think that is uh, trying to get going, but pulled back a little bit similar to the Facebook. You see uh, a little bit more of a better opportunity here? I do. Um, I'll, I'll tell you, Facebook has been one of my best trading vehicles for a couple of years. We had a swing um, when it broke out here, another one there. And another one when it broke out there and pulled back and retested and started to move. So we've had three swings on it this year, all successful. 
I'm currently not in the stock, although I told my people after this exhaustion gap to the downside, held the long-term trend line. Uh, and now that it's snapped back up and broke out to, into a resistance zone and backed off to partially fill the gap, it might very well be a stock that can come on, test the resistance zone between 39.5 uh, and 41 up in that zone there. Should it get to 40 and a half, three quarters up there, I think the stock could be 45, 48, 50 even again, but it'll take some to it doing. I want to point out that one of my philosophies has been when a stock is in a downtrend, it reverses and the moving averages cross over and then it consolidates above the moving averages. We often see a spike like we got there. Once it pulls back and does a Fibonacci retracement, about a 50% retest here into the gap, a lot of times if the volume's low, which it did recede uh, from the peak today, uh, it might very well come on again. And my targets right now would be 38, 39 and three quarters, and then something into the low to mid 40s. But we have to see a price volume surge. I mean, I want the combination of price and volume moving at the same time. For this thing, this thing needs a lot of volume because you can see, for example, on this day, it traded a mere 87 million shares. And here, it traded a mere uh, 103 million. So it's the kind of stock that, unless it trades 30, 40, 50 million, it's probably not going to be a big day for it. This, um, the way you're looking at it, everything is definitely on the technical side. Uh, you're not factoring in maybe that the election uh, and the use of Twitter during this uh, political period between now and November would have an effect on the stock? Nope. Uh, just really and, looking at, you're looking at following the money, following the momentum. Right. And if it does have an effect, we'll see it in the charts. The, that's my philosophy. Yes. The that charts is. will tell you what to do no matter what the fundamentals are. How many times have you seen great reports, great news, and a stock got pops and then and drops down and closes negative on a day and has a re reversal day because they sold the news? Uh, I'm not, uh, I can't even stand talking about fundamentals on my site because you will make a mistake if you get involved fundamentally. Because then you start to think about, well, this company does this, they got a great product. You know, it's like anything else. Like when Beyond Meat, everybody was going crazy with that stock. We were shorting it. And the, and it, the damn thing dropped from 249 down to 78 or whatever it was. Uh, yeah. But so I, I, I'm just not that interested. I'm only, the only time I'm interested in fundamentals is in the morning when a stock is gapping on news. I want to see how powerful the news is because it may indicate to me that that day, that could be an awesome momentum day trade type move. And that's, that's helpful. But from a longer term standpoint, I'm more interested in support, resistance, moving averages, and trend lines. Right. Okay. Uh, the next one here has obviously been in the news because it's gone nuts this year uh, from 200 bucks up to almost 1,000, then pulled back to 700. Now it's right around 767. This is Tesla. And uh, obviously, everyone's got an opinion on this one way or the other. Well, two things. Um, I told everybody when they broke out of this base there with the breakaway gap on heavy, heavy volume, watch for a pullback and buy the stock. And m many of us went in the 310 range. Um, yes, we sold a little early at my $500 target. Some of them did. And I sold some more when it spiked up to seven and change. I told everybody when this stock had a breakaway gap and it's on the heaviest volume in its history, up towards 969, whatever it was, mm -hmm. That watch this stock carefully because if the next day is a down gap, you're leaving an island reversal, which is very powerful top formation. Now, it hasn't collapsed and it's forming a wedge in here. So any move that's back over 845, 846 in this zone right here through that line, if you get any kind of volume, you will get a massive short covering that could get to 11, 1200. I don't think that's going to happen. I think the stock's going to roll over. Um, I may be wrong. I think the stock is way, way, way overvalued and extended. I'm looking for a move down to 675 and maybe even down to 600 again before it bounces around, maybe moves up. But ultimately, it wouldn't even dent the long-term trend line if it went down to 565, 550 here. So I would say the stock is, the only good part about this formation is the volume's receding as it consolidates. Also, the bars are getting a little narrower, if you notice. The daily ranges are narrower. That indicates something is coming, whether it be a spike up or a spike down, I can't tell you yet. But right now, the odds by two to one favor a down move because this is a bear wedge coming off of a down move until proven otherwise. We have to assume it's a one, two and wave three could take you down to at least 645. So I would look for 120 points down if it does, if it does break. And this is your internal trend line here, connecting these tops and the pullback low. So any move underneath say 687, I think it goes down substantially. That's my support level. Yeah, the shame of it is, is it'd be a good candidate to do a strangle on an option strategy, but the premiums are so uh, huge, uh, you probably couldn't make it work. I agree. 
Uh, okay, next up on here is uh, something that I think people are uh, probably concerned that it's stalled out here and they're trying to figure out, uh, does it have more legs or is it gonna have a further correction? And that's GLD. Okay, here's my take. This is a bull flag. Okay, that's my take. Number one, this first move is leg one, this is two, three, and four in the Elliott Wave scenario. My opinion is this is one and two of five. Then we get the breakout, we run up to 155 in leg three, we may pull back and then get a blow off towards 162, 66 up in that area, which would get you to the top of the long range uh, two year channel. And we'll have to see what happens then. But I'm thinking, stop it under here, any pullback under 145 probably gets me out, or half there and half under the trend line, which would get you down about 142. So 145, 142 stop, if you see this blow through 150, buy stop or add two for a run to 155 and 165. That's what I think might happen. I'm watching a lot of individual gold stocks. Stocks I like in the gold sector are AU, um, GOLD. Uh, look at this massive inverse head and shoulder, breakaway move, pullback. And I think the fifth wave would explode it up into the mid 20s if, if it does break out. Um, those are two gold stocks. There's several others I like. Kirkland has been my best, was my best pick in the last two years because I, I picked it at 13 and went up to 60 or uh, 50 some, 53. Uh, but you can see that one is dangerous looking because it came down from the bear flag and broke down to major support in that zone. Any further damage, the stock could fall apart. So I'm wondering what's going on with the gold stocks. Either they're consolidating or they're rolling over, and I can't figure it out yet. But in the yeah. case of GLD, just to wrap up, in the case of GLD. I think that this could very well be the consolidation phase after a run-up from 135 to 149, almost 150, about 14, 15 points. It's consolidating very nicely. And the volume of late in the last week or two has been a little bit more dissipated. But note this one. This is important, Jim. Note that during this consolidation, the unbalanced volume line is actually rising, showing a positive divergence and an accumulation. This is why I think it's gonna to break to the upside and run but that means the whole sector will run. So we'll have to see if that's gonna be the case. I know that my buddy, uh, Avi Gilbert over at LA Wave Trader, who's an expert in gold and picked every top and bottom of the last eight years, is looking for a generational move that's gonna take gold to a 3,000 in the next five years. So we'll see, and he's not, he also is calling for uh, one more, maybe one more pullback before it goes. Yeah, it looks a little bit like it's uh, any man's guess uh, at this point. If it breaks out above the resistance, great. But if it doesn't, there's two other stocks in this sector that I wanted you to just uh, take a quick look. And maybe there's other people out there who'd like to talk to you about it. One's a silver stock, PAAS, and that's Pan American yeah. Silver. I know. And uh, it's and we, been a winner, but now it's been a little staller. Are we just stalling, or is uh, this thing going to correct back down to maybe that 1940? Well, it's the same thing uh, that, I mean, first of all, Pan American and Wheaton, these are the two biggest silver companies in the world, okay? This one's had a one, two, three, four, it's got a, a coil that's formed over the last seven or eight months, and if it breaks out of there, it's a $40 stock. In, in Pan American, we've had leg one, two, three, and this is the fourth wave consolidation, which could last a little longer, but I would say that anything above, say, 2350 with volume would get my juices flowing, because I think then we're headed to 26 and a half, maybe a channel run to the top of the channel, 31, 32, 33 up there. If you look at the measured move from 15 and a half to 24, <coughs> eight and a half points and it added on to this pullback low, we got 29 and a half up in that zone up here. So that's what I'm looking for. And uh, one last one uh, is in the copper. You know, copper got nailed because China obviously had the problem with the virus and ergo um, the demand uh, they figure has gone away. And so the prices went from $3 uh, down to two fifty. And Freeport McMoran FCX, of course, uh, did have a correction as well, but it looks like it's trying to get back on the bicycle. Does it look uh, like something that could be uh, worthwhile to own, maybe even longer term? Especially longer term. I see a down leg that says one, two, three, four, five. It's a five wave, Elliott wave, typical Elliott wave move down from 20 to eight and a half. And then a double bottom, here's the retest. Look at the volume that came off this low, huge. Telling me that the low was in. <clears throat> it then had a little mini one, two, three, four, five wave move up through test resistance and a pullback. This is a one, two. That's my take. 
That's, yeah, that's your support. Stop under 10 and a half, 1060. But any move above 1385 and then 14 and a half, that zone, this thing could explode to 18. That's my target. And I'm looking at the measured move from here at about 843 to that level at about 13 and change. So let's call it five points added on to here. We got 15 three quarters. That's my target next up there. And then beyond that, I'm looking for close to 18. This is what I'm seeing developing. Now I could, you know, it's a little early. Yeah. But if you look at this angle like that, and it's a beautiful parallel rising channel, we're looking at 17, 18 anyway. So I would think that's a swing trade and you may see a 50% pop in the next couple months. Uh, I just want to point out something to you guys. If you see a major hit in this market and it's really set up to get one, I'm not saying we're going lower and I'm not bearish uh, because I don't think the market's triggered enough sell signals yet. But if we start to see that, I think protective money is going to start moving into gold and utilities and stuff like that. I just want to point this out uh, as a sidelight. Look, yeah. look at the utility index. Are you kidding mm -hmm. me? This looks like a tech stock, right? Yep. So it, it, it's at all-time highs, utility stocks, in the middle of this market. It tells me that slowly but surely, money's being pulled out of tech stocks, pulled out of biotech stocks, and they may be early, but they're going into protective stuff like utilities and some gold because gold is starting to, if you look at the GLD, that's the highest level on the GLD in what? A year so, or more. So I'm seeing protective money moving out of stocks. There may be some very clever money managers moving partial positions into cash, gold, utilities, and, and defensive sectors. And I'm, that's what worries me. Also, if you look at advanced declines, up, down volume, it's very narrow. Even on a good day, it's two to one. We're not seeing the five and 10 to ones anymore. Okay, so that, that's what troubles me, that the market's at a much more narrow focus. And that's what you get typically at the end of every major market. But we're not seeing certain signals like the VIX get, go to panic levels yet. And we're and not seeing McClellan oscillator overbought. We're certainly seeing oversold. If you look at where the McClellan was today, um, it's just, you know, it's a plus 38, which is kind of neutral. So until this gets up to 150, 200, 250 and overbought, I'm not going to get too concerned about the market. The market's backing and filling on the oscillator. And what that tells me is it's a much narrower market in terms of advanced declines and up-down volume. So you can't rely on the oscillators anymore because they're not giving you the same kind of signals unless they reach extremes, meaning up here or down there. All right, this next one uh, obviously has a lot to do with the uh, virus in China and it got hit and then it's uh, come back. It's Las Vegas Sands. And uh, again, uh, this is a company that, uh, just like copper, really, a copper like Freeport McMoran, you know, it seems like people are saying that the virus is not going to be quite as bad, and uh, now they're jumping right back into these things they ditched. Well, I'm pretty amazed by this because I would, I, you know, I, whether it is a virus or not, um, they've, it, this has got to affect the casinos. People are not going to go into a major crowded room and gamble when they don't know who's next to them. I, I, I wouldn't. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so either, but they're bidding it back up for some reason. Yeah, well, it could be short covering too. I don't know what it is, but the bottom line is one, two, three, four, five waves up and broke out, and then it came down. Now, this is a line in the sand, but quite frankly, when I see V bottoms with right handed extensions, that's what this is called. From a technical standpoint, that's your support, not down here. If it breaks and rolls over, it takes out 66, so that's my stop. If it runs, there's a gap right there. Note what it did today. It ran right to the gap. Likely we'll see a pullback here. If it blows through it, that would be a shocker to me, but it wouldn't surprise me if it kept going that it's going to get up to 74 or even 78. Those are my targets, but I would also be very careful. I'm not seeing great technicals on it despite that rally, and so always be careful about that. Hey, here's another one uh, uh, off the grid uh, that's uh, you know in the China spectrum is Baba. Why don't we look at Baba and see if you think that $200 uh, mark is uh, enough of a, a, a support to uh, – to trade against this is the same chart i mean it's got that like spike down and then yeah. and, and then we got the right hand extended v it blew up with a breakaway gap got to resistance and backed off this is what i was talking about with lvs lvs is up here it hasn't backed off yet right uh, you're asking me is there support right there about you said 200 well i said 200 looks like a pretty good line in the sand if you wanted to uh, trade it or you can move it up even to the 210 area to uh, 211 area right yeah that's right 212 is support yeah um, and the resistance unequivocally is up here at about 225.6. Let's see, 228. 
226, 28 is resistance, and we're right up there. So we either do one of two things, in my opinion, here. Blow out, run through the highs, and then, you know, and, and get a big short squeeze. Yeah. That's a pretty damn good chart. Or roll over, test, and maybe break down, and then fall apart. So you've got to stop this under 212, in my opinion. You know, they did a little thing on, uh, on one of the uh, stations that uh, the uh, P ratios in uh, Asia stocks versus P ratios in uh, U.S. stocks uh, show that the Asian stocks are the cheapest they've ever been basis that compar comparison. So if uh, something like this did get on the bicycle uh, and it got a crowd behind it, you know, there could, it, it could be some upside potential that it'd be significant. No question. This could blow up into the 250 to 60 range, uh, if nothing else, on short squeeze. But I got to tell you, my take is, that, do you know how many, there, I said something like 2,000 Chinese companies are now looking for loans because they have big financial problems based on right. closing their plants. They, their employees can't go to work. Right. Uh, they, can't, they can't get supplies from suppliers. It's like, it's a disaster over there. And they're making light of it, but it's a lot worse than we think it is. And that's what I'm worried about, how, how it might affect the U.S. economy some of the suppliers out here but anyway bob is a good you know overall it's a it's a darn good stock if, as long as you can maintain stops notice this pullback here right there yeah 210, 210 and three quarters this one 212 so yeah. that zone is to me a support zone and there's a 50-day moving average right there see it the red line yeah. so anything under 210 12 out anything over to um you know 28 30 it could, it could fly yeah, Howard Marks from Oak uh, Tree was saying that uh, he's expecting a distressed debt out of China to increase uh, significantly, potentially, unless they throw enough money at it. And they've already thrown $300 billion, so they're certainly throwing money at it. Anyway, yeah. next one is uh, TNDM, and it's uh, diabetes care, and uh, it's uh, health care, which is in your alley, because I know you really like the sector. Yep, but I want to tell you that this was my stock of the year in 2018. Why? Mm -hmm. Check this out. I'm looking at this long-term downtrend, one, two, three, four, five waves down. Then I saw a base pattern. And when it popped and formed this little flag in here, I put a swing on it, I kid you not, at 275. And the stock went to 80. So I, I would think that would be my stock of the year. It was. I would think, think so. Yeah. And then actually, right now, and I just want you to know that three weeks ago when it popped and broke through these highs, I put a swing on it right here about 74. It's already up to 81. It hit as high as 82.59 today. But I'm thinking this stock is headed to about 100, give or take two points in that area, 98 to 102 zone. That's my near-term target. It's still got almost 10% short interest, so there's still people that can come out. Yep. Uh, but it shows that the company's not making any money. So this is really a come line bet as far as uh, their future revenues, I guess, huh? No question. But again, the, the trend is your friend. I'm a tech oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm not that concerned about the fundamentals because... Well, that's a good example of why you wouldn't want to just follow the fundamentals because the stock's going through the roof while people who look at it fundamentally would say the company's not profitable. Well, obviously, they're betting on profitability down the road in a big way. Well, they certainly have a fantastic product from what I heard. Yeah. Okay, here's another one that's kind of in the, um, in the uh, drug uh, situation here, uh, uh, Gilead, uh, Gilead Sciences. And... Uh, uh, this is interesting chart-wise, huh? Yeah, I mean, when you look at the overall chart pattern here, look at that move. Mm -hmm. okay? But I also want to point out to you folks that when this stock formed this pattern, left shoulder, head, right shoulder, and rolled over here, I put a short on it in the high 70s, and eventually it made it down here to 64, and then it went, a, a year later it was down to 60. Um, but the promising part is that it's now built a year-long chart base pattern. Uh, the declining top side was broken. The base was retested one more time. This volume up here is very impressive. Look mm -hmm. at the volume of the updates, these two big bars. Yeah. Uh, if the pullbacks come on a much lower volume. I'm not sure if this is it yet, meaning whether it's breaking out of its base because it looks like it's stalled at resistance and pullback. But I'll tell you what, you can keep an eye on this one. Any move over 71 I'd go long for moving to the high 70s, maybe low to mid 80s. I'm, it's, it's not my favorite pattern, but if you're asking me what, what I do with it, I would wait to, to see what happens with it. Um, and if you're already in it, stick with it. And you, but you got to stop this one, in my opinion, under like 64. But on a move above 71, it might be a better deal because you'd be jumping into some better momentum. 100% correct. Yeah. 
All right. Well, we weren't all over this uh, FCX, so I guess I must have been reading uh, the mind of the people out there because uh, Freeport McMoran, we already went over that. So um, we can um, here at the midway point, um, if you'd like, Harry, to go over a couple of stuff, uh, some, you know, some of the stuff you're looking at. Well, um, I've always been big on solar stocks, but they're so damn volatile. I'm blown away by this chart. This is the ETF for the solar group, TAN. Look at this chart. You would think that solar stocks are on fire, right? Now, some of them are, not the whole group yet, but that's what's telling me this is what I want to be in. And look at today's volume, uh, huge. Now, sometimes when a stock runs like this one has from 27 to 38, um, and it does it with big volume spike into the re resistance layer area, it's not the time to buy. I would look for a pullback consolidation. But what I do like is first solar. This is the leader in the industry. It's the mammoth of that industry. It's been a great trading stock for me in the last eight years. I've traded it there, 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 and there. And I also put a swing on it today. I think it broke out above the 50-day moving average right today. See it? And the volume picked up. Uh, closing near the upper end of the range, at, actually at the high for the day. Um, my target range is 59, 62, and then I think it's going to see mid to high 60s on this one for at least an 8 to 10 point swing trade. That's an idea I like, and it's a lot of stocks in that group like Sunrun. Look at this chart. Powerhouse. And then JKS may be the strongest one. Of late, it's moved vertically with huge volume yesterday and today, breaking out across the double top. So I think First Solar is headed for higher levels. And there's many stocks like C, uh, Canadian Solar, CSIQ in that group, that is starting to come out of a big basing pattern, something to watch in that group. And you know, there's several other stocks in that group. Uh, that SunPower, SPWR, by the way, is number two behind First Solar. And that has built a big base. Now, we had a swing on it here when it broke out, double topped and came down. Today, I think, was a breakaway again. So this one may very well get up to the uh, 13, 14, 15 range in the near term. Something to watch. And it's part of that uh, green, uh, you know, movement that's going on with the uh, ESG stocks and all that kind of stuff, right? right. Um, also, another stock that I follow closely um, is Amcor, A-M-K-R. We did very well when it broke out there and it just spiked. And then it had a three-way corrective pullback and spiked again. Now, I'm not sure it can get through there because it backed off the last couple of days. It's kind of quiet around 13. But my targets are 15, 17 and a half, and 19. I think the stock, this is a breakaway move. We'll see if we follow through. Now, the last time I did that, it, you saw it had several months of consolidation. Same here. So it may not be have the momentum that we want. Um, a few other stocks I like are E-G-A-N. You can see why. When it broke out above the uh, eight and a half, Nine zone, I put a swing on it and immediately followed through to 1043 today. Maybe need some consolidation, but this is a base declining top sign breakout of a big coiling base pattern. And I think we're going to see 12 and a half and then 15, 16 range. In the, uh, in the, um, the papers that you issue or the trading room, uh, do you go over a lot of these different symbols? Every day. Okay. Great. I mean, obviously, it'd be very worthwhile to uh, keep in touch on these things because some of these are very inexpensive. And when they get that cheap, it's almost like buying an option. I mean, this company here going for three, uh, two, three, four bucks, you know, you buy it unless the company goes out of business, you can own it as long as you'd like. And it's like buying a long call option. Yeah, that's a good point. Plus, they don't expire, right? That's um, what I'm saying. Yeah. Here's an inverse head and shoulder pattern for AVXL, left shoulder, head, right shoulder with a platform. Notice it blew through triple top recently stall for a couple of days and then today had a beautiful day up another almost 10 percent on 2.4 million notice the cluster of volume on a breakout move i think this stock is just beginning move it's going to take it to 8 10 and maybe in the mid to high teens if it gets the volume i'm thinking it could get we shall see what kind of uh, volume does avxl trade i'm having a hard time reading the chart late it's traded about two and a half million shares a day for the last 10 days i mean that's that's uh, plenty of volume huh no question. Yeah, I mean, these are inexpensive stocks. Some people call them pink sheets. Uh, some people call them penny stocks, whatever. The bottom line, though, is, is that the volume in these are far different than the ones that uh, have an echo chamber when you go to buy and sell, you know? Yeah, and then, you know, I'm very big on biotech stocks. There's a few that I'm watching and trading right now. Uh, we were long. Look, look at this coiling base breakout retest. When it broke out, we went long, and that stock just was a beauty for us. It pulled back. It broke out again. I'm long again. Now, 
I think it has huge potential. I'm not sure if it's a too overbought uh, and it might be vulnerable. So that's just one of my trades I'm watching closely. I have several on the board that I like in the biotech sector. And in the se semiconductor sector, MAXR, <coughs> you can see the big decline, the breakout retest again, again, and now flag. This flag was where I put a swing on when it broke out above 11 and three quarters. It ran to 21 in about a month, pulled back and it's running again. Inside day today, I, I'm thinking the stock is 24, 27, and 30 in the next few weeks and months. Maxar. Now here's a stock. I love price cheapy. I think it's a home run. Home run. It came down from four into the literally a quarter. Warmed the base, broke out. Look at the green, look at the OBV. The stock's been trending beautifully all the way up. Today, popped another seven cents to 180. Um, I'm hearing a lot of very positive things fundamentally, but I, I, from the standpoint of the technical chart pattern, look at that trend. If it breaks out of here, it's a three, four, five dollar stock going forward, currently at 180. I'm very high on Milestone Scientific, MLSS. This is a stock that really intrigues me. Another in the biotech sector is Nubase. I know a lot about this company fundamentally, but I just love charts that look like this. Rising patterns, consolidate on low volume, pop on big volume, pull back again on low volume. This is on the verge of another big move, folks. And when it goes, I'm looking for 12, 15, and eventually, from what I'm hearing, if their technology, which is phenomenal, um, gets positive data on their first trial that's coming out shortly, this could be a home run into the 20s and 30s. Something to keep a close tab on. These are my two favorite junior stocks right now, New Base and Milestone. Let's go over some more stocks. Okay. You know, one thing I was just uh, noticing as I'm listening to you is, you know, you have identified certain sectors and these sectors tend to be, uh, you know, pretty, uh, pretty volatile. And that's the semiconductor, the biotech and the solar. And, uh, you know, the solar thing is just getting uh, going again, simply because again, uh, the, uh, you know, BlackRock with their environmentally sound uh, situations that they're promoting. And, uh, you know, the electric cars, you know, are going in that direction. So, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, when you identify a sector that can be, um, you know, volatile and, and also get a lot of money flow going into it, if you can find individual stocks like you're trying to do, uh, you, it can be like the uh, rising tide lifts many boats, right? Yeah, but I also got to say that I think that um – for me, it's all about the technicals. And if I hear a good fundamental story, I'm, I'm good with it. But at the same point, yeah. um, there's a good time to buy a bad stock and a bad time to buy a good stock. But there's, a, there's also a good reason why the healthcare and the biotechs are doing so well, because the demographics of the country, these pe uh, you know, everybody is jumping into healthcare because they uh, know the boomers are going to be using all these services at some point in time in w one shape or another. Yep. Like in this case, Milestone, uh, uh, the fundamentals are that they have a new device that's 98 to 99% accurate in order for, for doing epidurals and, um, and, and injections at very critical points. Because right, right now, only eight, uh, 80 or 85% um, are successful. And if you have a, a miss on a needle in your spine, it's, it could be disastrous and are extremely painful. So I, there's about, from what I'm hearing, six to eight hospital chains right now, major ones, looking at their device. And if they get an order from one of them, they'll all fall in place. This could be a monster. It could be really huge. I'm talking a 10-bagger on this stock potentially in the next year. And again, it's at the price of an option. Yeah. Um, okay, let's go to the slow-moving uh, trains here. And uh, we're on telephone now. Uh, <laughs> exactly, I would say so. But you know what? It's funny. When I looked at the stock last year in December, it had a left shoulder, a head, and a right shoulder and formed a little inverse head and shoulders. And when it broke uh. out there and then retested and stair-stepped its way up, I said, this is a bullish looking chart. But now I'm wondering whether this is a double, triple top. And I'm wondering whether this here is uh, on the verge of a potential breakdown. You have to stop at t under 36, under 36 out. Okay, but if it gets over 39, three quarters, my target's 43, 44. Um, it still has a very bullish chart. There's no reason to sell. There's right. no, reason to, no reason to anticipate. And here's why this is probably not a top, even though it looks like it could be. Look at the unbalanced volume going steadily higher. Mm. When you see a stock consolidating and OBV is moving up, it's accumulation, not distribution. If this line was going down like that, 
while the stock was going sideways or up, then it would be a negative divergence and I'd be out of it. But now I would stick with AT&T until it broke 36. Yeah, and that Paul Singer obviously made a big bet on it, and uh, he's of the opinion that there's a lot of potential to the upside. And that's one of the reasons I think people uh, ran into this thing is because they're looking for changes and monetization and all that kind of stuff. Okay, we got Cisco Systems, and uh, did they announce this week? Uh, I, don't... I think tonight. Afterwards. Tonight. Okay. So now the deal is, is uh, are we going to get a big uh, jump up or not? I see a change on my screen of minus 62 cents, but I don't know if that's accurate. Well, yeah, they probably released earnings. That, look, look, see it? This is a one-minute chart. Okay. Pop, it's, it's headed a lot lower. They must have missed or yeah. something. Or, and the guy, well, the guy wasn't telling you things were going to be great uh, when he was interviewed over in Davos, you know, so. Yeah. He was saying so. Anyway, what do you, uh, do you think uh, this is a, uh, just consolidating and maybe there's a breakout to the upside a little later? Or? Well, it's pretty amazing. If you look at the long-term chart and just draw your lines across the lows. The right there. I, I consider this an overshoot. That, that's your actual true channel. Mm -hmm. um, right now it's had a one, two, three, four, five wave decline off the top, top of the channel to the bottom of the channel. And it popped up and retested. Now it's moving again. But unfortunately, based on tonight's stuff, it's not going to break over 50 and a half, which is what it needed. So we'll see if it fails or, and or, whether the pullback holds 47 and certainly 46, and that's a stop on the 46. It does look like a little inverse head and shoulders. It also had this, a declining top line that was broken in a large falling wedge type pattern right there. And it's at the breakout point. You can see there's a triple bottom here. And there's a top, couple tops in here. So this zone is resistance. We break mm -hmm. through it, it could pop. It looks like a reverse head and shoulders a little bit right. too. Right, that's what I said, inverse head oh, and yeah. shoulders. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. again, this is where you're stopping. The right shoulder line under 45 and three quarters out. If it gets over 50 and three quarters, it could take off. My targets would be there, 54 and a half, 58. 54 and a half, 58 are my targets. Then you're off to the races into the mid 60s. I wouldn't bet the farm on that. But for starters, let's get it may, it may try to get that gap at 54, huh? <coughs> yeah, <clears throat> indeed. All right, AUPH. I'm not really familiar with this one. so I, let's... I, uh, I know it well. And, and, it, and let me also <clears throat> say, now, this is my style, okay? When I see a stock, first of all, and that is in a long base pattern. Now, this was an anomaly because a lot of biotechs rolled over October, November. But when it has a V bottom with a little coil, forms a platform, the volume's low, and breaks out and runs up here, gets the resistance, backs off. This was the breakout day right there. See it? Mm -hmm. Broke through the line. And then it ran for five days. And then trading was halted. The stock exploded on drug news. When it pulled back, I put another swing on it, believe it or not, at 16 and a quarter. And it made it to 22 in about two weeks. Right now, it's in a long consolidation. This little falling channel broke out announced in a five-day flag at the 50-day moving hour. So this is time to put up or shut up for the stock. If it goes, my target is 22.3, and then off to the races. I can't tell yet. The stop is under, for me, under 17, I'm out. Yeah. It, uh, uh, anything on the background on what made it pop? Was it a trial or something? Or? No, it was a pop, positive drug news or FDA approval or something like that. But it was, look, the stock wouldn't have gone from 4 to 21 unless it was something significant. All right, this one's in the sector you had mentioned earlier. Well, not really a utility. Yeah, this is more ener this is more energy, but it's a utility, right? Oh, it's totally utility. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's yeah. been around a long time. If it was energy, it wouldn't be pressing its high, right? <laughs> well, not likely, right? Um, but it's amazing how many utilities look like this. Yeah. And my take on this one is it's in a nice rising channel. It's probably one of those dividend payers. Everybody gets excited. I don't. Yeah. I hope it's not. When I buy a stock, I don't want it to pay dividend because that's not my kind of stock. So here's the bottom line. It breaks out above here. It could rock it to 107, 110, 115. But it's at the top of a channel. It's also top of a short-term channel. It's extended. And uh, the only positive is that the market does roll over. This could spike up. If yeah. the market doesn't roll over and continues to go, my feeling is this is back off, this is back off to 90, 91. If the 10-year treasury, uh, you know, breaks back under 160, then down towards 150, and even down to 140, this would probably benefit from that. Yep. All right, next one up is uh, QQQ. 
<clears throat> Pretty amazing chart, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Um, I will point out a couple of things. <clears throat> I always do. This is the same as the NDX. A perfect parallel channel for the last 15 months with a spike low in December and then a one, two, three, a long-term basis. Okay. The, the bottom line is you can see that the breakout occurred here, but it's extended. Now, I don't know how far they can extend. The market always goes further than you think they can. It always goes further than you think it can. It also goes to the downside further than you think it can. But in, in the long run, it's a one, two, a three, four, and a five. That's what worries me about the market. It's so extended in the fifth wave at the top of the channel. To me, it's a no brainer to peel back or, and or tighten your stops. If you want to stay with it, fine. I would do this. I would be really careful in here. And I would stop under 228, period. You see that stock come under 2, 27.95, 28. That's, this three day stall is what I think is current support. Secondary support would be right here at the gap, right there. So for me, I'm stopping half under 238 and I'm stopping the rest under 224 and a half and I'm out, which would give you an average of about 226.7 range if it should collapse. That's always a way to stop yourself. I'm amazed how many people don't know how to sell, don't know how to buy or where to buy. Uh, that's one of the reasons why when you come to my site and I give you guidance every day, all day, intraday, and uh, even in the evenings, I do a chart of the day video every night and I do a one hour weekend video, weekend webinar for everybody to, to kind of summarize the week. So there's a lot of goodies in what I do, but from the standpoint of QQQs, um, same as this stock, the NDX index, the, you know, same chart and they're all extended. They're all at the top of the long range channel. Look at this. This is six, six, seven year channel top right there. Mm. So be really careful with this market at this stage. Any neg let's put it this way. The market is so extended that anything that's major negative news could crush, I mean crush this market. So I'm always keeping my eyes out for, for something bad and, and move quickly, but it's a phenomenal trend. And the trend is your friend. The QQQ is a move from 178 to 234 just since October. The uh, ride sharing, Uber. I don't get it. Uh, first of all, um, I, you know, this company's been losing billions and it's supposed to be profitable by the end of the year. Right. Uh, that's, that's the CEO talking. Um, uh, this had a volume picked up there, though, right? Oh, yeah. Well, this had a one, two, three, four, five, perfect LA wave decline. Folks, if you do basic chart analysis and you see a stock go up in five waves or down in five waves, then maybe an important turning point. Here's where it broke out. This one day right there, coming through the decline top sign with a gap, I'm pick up in volume. Then it stalled for a few days, had a good old volume day there. And that's your breakout day. And look what it's done since. Where is it now? Top of the channel. It's at, at resistance. And if you look at this, yeah. these lows, these lows are that high, coming right above where we are. So I'm not sure how much more it's got before it pulls back and or if it explodes and blows up to 45, 46, 7 range, I'd be a seller as quick as I could sell it. If you look at Lyft, L-Y-F-T, it's a sister company there. What, uh, what does that look like technically? It got crushed today. Okay. 10% yep, down, 10% down. A, down, yeah. a breakaway gap to the downside with huge historical <laughs> volume. I don't know, that's the heaviest volume I've ever traded on down day. I would get the hell out of Dodge on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you wouldn't be alone getting out either. Yeah. Um, okay, last one here we've got is PG. Procter and Gamble. And then there's a couple other I was gonna just uh, shoot by uh, um, that. Uh, yeah, no problem. Yeah. Um, look, this stock's been wonderful. And it, 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 from May of 2018, not even a year ago, it was 71. And it ran up to 120, what, seven? 128. Look at the last three days. This is immediately what I do. I take the last significant low and I put a stop under it. When you're in an uptrend, you shouldn't start to make lower lows. If you look across here, every low is a higher low, okay? This breaks down here, everything could change. Notice the difficulty this stock had getting through 127.8. Right through here. I, I'm calling a top on a stock. Now, I may be wrong. I, it hasn't broken yet. So, yeah, I'm, and never anticipate. Uh, one rule of thumb, folks, 
When you, when you anticipate, you have a higher degree of being wrong. Wait for the market and or stock to confirm a move and maybe even retest after it breaks out. But don't chase the breakout. It will cost you a lot. This next, yeah, this, uh, this next one I was going to throw at you uh, is something that I picked up at lower levels. And uh, so full disclosure, I'm an owner of it. Uh, and it had a good day today, Teva, T-E-V-A. Is there anything there or is it, uh, I think it might be running into some resistance around 14. Yeah, but I, Teva was on my swing trade list. And the reason is, is this, simply this. A long downtrend. Yeah. Followed by a base breakout. Yep. A three wave corrective pullback, forming a new rising channel parallel to these tops. Right. That's when I knew it spiked off of here. Watch for a consolidation. It was here. This is yeah. where I told my people it's a good swing trade. And it was trading at about 11 on the breakout. And then it followed with a four day little flag on low volume. This is what I call the low volume app. When you see a little bar, a, a narrow price range for a day, and the volume is the lowest it's been in several sessions, if not weeks. Take a look at this low. That's the lowest it was since here. So it broke out of that, and today it popped again. Um, I don't think it's done. I will say that the angle of ascent shows that it could reach as high as 14 and a half, even 15 and a half before it's over, somewhere in that zone. But it needs to pull back as a little extended short term. Now, also the resistance across here, that prior low, comes into play as well. So yeah. This is why it's a little extended. It might be at the top of the channel. This is the danger zone for me. One of two things that always happens here, either it just blows and flies and gets squeezed and maybe even gets up to my next target would be 17 on it, okay? If it runs and blows off to 17, that's where I exit. But I would also look for a rebound, excuse me, a retest, consolidation, something like, you know, a consolidation, a flag, a wedge or something in here and a pullback to maybe test mid-channel before it goes up to the 15, 16, 17 range. But it's a good chart and the volume looks great. Yeah, I'm happy with it. Um, what about uh, Carnival uh, Corporation, CCL? You know, obviously they got hit very hard with the virus, uh, but is there an opportunity here? Because it seemed to come down to the 52-week lows area and the P ratio is 10, which is nothing. And, uh, you know, what's going on? What do you think? Yeah, it looks pretty lousy still. Yeah. I, with so many beautiful charts. Yeah. Why you know, fool around with this thing? Exactly. I mean, the stock... It looks like a disaster to me. I mean, it's been in a downtrend for, I don't get any, I wouldn't go on a cruise line if you paid me. Yeah. Okay. That, that's, uh, this, look, look at these people that are quarantined. Out of <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or better yet, the people that suddenly fall overboard and you never see them again. <laughs> They're on Dateline NBC. Yeah. I'm, uh, uh, like, okay. How about this one we've, here? Uh, uh, we've had a few requests from the live audience too. Oh, sure. What do you got? Uh, CRSP. Chris? Yeah. C-R-S-P. <coughs> We're talking about um, <coughs> CRISPR Therapeutics. Yeah, there's another one. Yep. Yeah, I know this company very well. And um, they're in the same area as, this, as that new base I talked about. But here's, I was along after it hit the V bottom and hit a platform and broke out. Didn't go anywhere for two, three months, but boy, when it did, it took off. Right now, it's in a corrective phase. Um, and it's down there support in this zone here. Um, if you're going to buy it, you must stop under 50. Uh, I do like the fact that it stuck its head out above the declining tops line, out above the 21-day moving average, just white line. But it's got work to do. Um, it's not exactly wowing me, but the volume has increased. Here's the, where this stock has a problem. There is a line of resistance between these lows and this snapback high and the moving average. So uh, my target would be 63.4. If it gets through that, 73. Um, but I want to see better volume. And notice that as it goes up, the volume is actually coming down a little bit. Not ha never happy with that. And the danger here is that this is not the channel. This is the channel. And if that's the case, watch this. Then you've got a perfect parallel channel. And we just hit the top of that channel. And they're going to fail and roll over and come down to 48. So that's the worry I would have if I were you on this one. It looks like, and I want to show you something on an hourly chart. Looks like an inverse head and shoulders. See it? So that's a positive factor. Um, but I, I need to get it above 64 with energy to really get it going. So that's your near term uh, watch le uh, level. Do you have anything next, else? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, SPCE. <laughs> Virgin Glass. Well, <laughs> I've been watching this stock and trading it almost every day for the last, you know, six weeks. Um, two things I want to point out. 
It exploded and had a one, two, three, four wave move. I thought we were getting a fifth wave instead of turned around and broke out and formed a little flag. When it broke out above here, we went long. It didn't do much for a, you know, a couple of weeks. That's where it really broke out above there. Right there is a breakout day. Look what it led to. Got to the top of the channel, pulled back, formed a wedge or a coil here. Here's your coil. Broke out with volume, but couldn't get through the prior. High, consolidated coil, and broke out again. That's where we went long. Now the breakout and the pop. Today's high at 24 and a half. 48 was my, <coughs> excuse me, 24 and a half was my target. We hit 24, 48, and then reversed. Not so sure that we didn't hit a significant peak today. And take a look at this. Late in the day, SPCE formed a bear flag. When a stock breaks down on heavy volume, look at those red bars. And the technicals fell apart too. Suddenly it tells me a lot of selling going on here. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking this leads to lower levels and a retest of even deeper trend levels. Down near 22 and a quarter and maybe all the way down to 21 again. Careful. I like the overall chart so much because of the momentum and huge volume. But sometimes when they run up for a few days on heavy volume, they'll go into this kind of a pattern. It may be in need of because it's at mid-channel line. This is mid-channel meaning um, between the tops and bottoms, we have a mid-channel line, and that's right about 25. If it breaks through here, if it backs and fills for a day or two, or, or just goes through it right away, this is the 28, 29, $30 stock. And it may be as much as 32, 33 in the next few weeks if it continues this momentum with solid volume. But it's a little extended short term. Good momentum though. Okay, and the next one is AMD. One of my favorites and a current tech trader swing. From where? I'll show you. Right there. I see a triple top. I see a breakout. I go long. Flag, pop to my first target near 40. Consolidate, run to my second target at 44 and 48 and 50. Another new high today. 54.85. 55 was my target. My next target is 62 and then 75. Do I think it goes there? Why not? Here's your long-term chart. Strong leg, one, two, three, four, and this is the fifth wave. Within the fifth wave, we have one, two, and three. So at some point, maybe from here, I'm anticipating a pullback and gets it back to 40, 42, 44. It, I'm not sure if it's going to go up to 60 first or it'll pull back to that level at this point. Big support at 43, 44, and then the trend line, which comes in around 40. I don't know if it's going down there first or it's going up first, but as long as the trends are friend and momentum is, is, is strong in this one, I would stick with it till 59.60 for starters and then eventually 70 if it gets there. The other, the other thing I would look at is based on this little pattern with multiple high, um, lows in this area over a six week period, you cannot repeat, you cannot let this go below 46. That's where it collapses to, to 42 and 37, 38. Okay. So, it's a, bio, it's a uh, semiconductor, it's volatile, it's got a long move up from literally under two bucks in 2016. It's gone from two to 54 folks. We're talking 17, uh, what is it, uh, 24 fold increase, 22 fold. So it's, it's long in the tooth, it's, it's got great fundamentals. Uh, just heard something yesterday about them replacing Intel in some of the Apple, Apple computers, so it's amazing. But here's the bottom line, strong trend, the trend is your friend. The trend says we're going to 59.60 for starters. But keep your stops under 46. 100% do that. I got a quick question for you on this. Um, is the RSI confirming this high? Um, because I, it made a high in January, I guess. And then uh, it came down. Then it came back up and made a new high. Is the RSI uh, lagging and the volume lagging on this uh, breakout uh, to new highs? Oh, the volume's lagging a little bit, but it's not bad. And most importantly... Rather than an RSI, I follow OBV, unbalanced volume. Okay. Right there, this is a new high on OBV, confirming the new high. There's no negative divergence that I can see. Okay. I, can go, I can check RSI, ADX, all these other things. I'm a big believer doing this for 60 years that keep it simple, stupid. And I have two indicators in this window, which is volume and unbalanced volume. And right. then I have money stream and balancing power, which is similar to ADX and RSI anyway. Mm -hmm. So even there, you'll see that it's confirming slightly. Not, not really, it's not strongly confirming. So there's always a chance. For <gasps> but it's not diverging to write home about. That's right. 
Yeah. All right. We're at the top of the hour. And I just had a question for you. You know, you have the uh, chat room um, at the company and obviously you can share all these different ideas, but uh, do you also issue some type of, um, you know, um, focus list or hot list uh, each uh, week or month? Every day I have a focus list before the market opens. Great. So, I mean, obviously that's uh, people, people should take advantage of that. And then I have a swing trade list here. Right. Of stocks that I put out over the last couple of three, four weeks. And then I have a bunch of stocks over the last year, you can see, uh, many of which did very well, and some haven't, but that's the beauty of stops, right? You can see my picture there, and every, anyone else who's in a room can, can have their picture in there or whatever else, but you can see that we're constantly, constantly, constantly posting comments, fundamentals and technicals, and opinions, as well as here, we're watching today, it started the day with CAN, check this out, folks, on a day trade basis, CAN. Today, this stock ripped, flagged. I put a buy right there on the breakout of the flag at 5.30. We never sold it until this volume spike. When I said the stock is cooked at eight and a quarter, it actually got to 8.69. Reversed hard and bounced. And then whoever didn't sell it there, I told them to get out because the volume wasn't as strong. Anyway, it was a home run because it went from 5.30 to 8.69 and it only took a couple hours. So that's example of a day trade that we do um, but that and th that's something that um, when you come into the room you'll see lots of that kind of stuff all day and the good part is i constantly do webinars live live webinars where i'll update everybody on what the chart patterns look like and i'll raise my stops raise my targets or tell, tell people to exit a portion and take some profits this was a home run for us because we nailed the low the breakout and that the high as well okay well, this, uh, again, uh, uh, guys that are listening in right now, you, you know, want to check out what Harry can do for you in the, in the trading room, plus what he does uh, every day, issuing the focus list and everything. Uh, how do they get a hold of you, Harry? Um, well, they go to www.thetechtrader.com, and here's the front page. And here you'll say create a new account. Just click on sign up for free. And uh, that's, I'm already a member, so that, that didn't work. But uh, you put your... Uh, Name, last name, email address, choose a password, and you're in completely the entire service, the day trades, the swing trades, the, the webinars, the charts of the day, the weekend webinar, all of that for free for two weeks, no credit card necessary, just sign up and come in. And most people tell me that when they sign up for two weeks, they make enough money to pay for the first year. So there you go. That's pretty good. Thanks for having me. Look forward to doing this again. I like doing it. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thanks a lot, Harry. And uh, David, it's back to you. All right. Thanks, guys. Lots of good info today. Uh, we had a lot of requests in the live chat for, uh, for symbols, so uh, we got through as many as we could. But uh, if um, uh, we, we, for those who are new to Analyze Your Trade today, uh, we do this every week. And uh, I plan on, uh, usually every Tuesday, but I plan on fitting in more of these uh, special episodes as well. Um, so uh, be sure to join us next time and request your uh, symbols again. So uh, just a quick reminder, be sure, uh, be sure to subscribe to Timing Research on YouTube and your favorite podcast network. And you can also go to timingresearch.com to get access to the recording uh, of this or any past shows. And I uh, just want to thank my guests again for today, Harry Boxer of thetechtrader.com and Jim Kenny of optionprofessor.com. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Dave.